Okay, so let's start off. Uh, any requests or suggestions? We'll go back to the gallery there. And uh, uh, anybody have uh, Scott? So this, this might be more of a Saturday question, but my question is about um, the different about different states, like different you know states. when we states like energetic mental states, like you point your fingers, it changes your state a bit. You. you mm -hmm. Add your elbows, it changes your state. When you meditate, it's a different state. There's the enlightened state. You know, um, what, um, there we go. What's your take or whatever on, are they all the same? Are they different grades of the same thing? Is, what, what's your take on all of that? Uh, that's a, that's a, a really good question. And, uh, uh, let me put it on the back burner for right now, but uh, we'll get back to that because that's um, I think that's a very important question, and uh, I think one we'll uh, uh, we definitely want to want to warm up to because that's that, that, that's a fantastic question actually. Good. Hi, Lynn. Hey, I have to go tell Nick I'm on. I'll be back. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? Any other requests? We got different states. I have some questions from Diane that I wanted to get to, and uh, that she had asked a little while ago, and I wanted to get to those also. Um, any other? Anybody else have a direction they want to go for the evening? So, okay. Well, let's. Uh, why don't I grab that uh, list of Diane's questions because they uh, they were. We're uh, kind of old business that uh, needs some clarification. So uh, uh, let me uh, do that. Boom, boom. Okay, so uh, it's okay to, to, to uh, answer these, right, Diane? We're good? She said good. Okay, yeah, good. Okay. So, uh, so she had some questions about substantial and insubstantial. And that's a topic that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. So uh, good to uh, clarify some of those points. Um, number one, in the warm-ups, the non-weighted leg could have an insubstantial connection to the earth, correct, question mark. So, uh, so yes. So I think an important thing to remember about insubstantial and substantial is that every point and every point of every point has its own substantial and insubstantial. So it is more a question of what you're looking at and how you're looking at it that uh, makes it um, uh, makes it substantial, insubstantial. And it's always comparative. It's always more or less. It's always, so it's never absolutely one or the other since both are existing in everything at every, every time. It's a question of, okay, in this context, is it substantial or insubstantial? So uh, uh, there's a part two to that, which is in the warm ups, the way that they could also have an insubstantial connection to your earth as we feel it through the earth. So, uh, so we have uh, the idea here is if I'm standing in a bow stance, say, my weight is primarily in my right leg. And so my right leg is substantial. My left leg is less substantial or insubstantial in this case. So that means that my attention is on my right leg and, and it is the supporting leg right now. But just because it's, it is doesn't mean it's necessarily um, the case because if I want to bring my, uh, my weight to my back leg, my left leg, just by bringing my awareness to my back leg and, and making that, that decision to shift, it has now become substantial. That is because it has my attention. It has, I'm, so I'm, I'm starting to, to make that, that shift. So what, even though it has less weight in it still, it has begun to, that transition from, from insubstantial to substantial. So there's this constant, very much like yin yang, they are mutually arising and only exist if we're thinking about them. The, uh, 
there's no absolute substantiality or or insubstantiality. It's always with reference to your thinking about it. Okay, and you're saying, oh, okay. So if my left arm is 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 out and reaching outward, then that is substantial because it's where my attention is is where the work is being done. But that doesn't mean it's entirely always substantial in this case because if I'm if I'm lifting up my right hand, even as I'm doing that, there is a shift occurring. So that is, it's, a, it's, a, it's constantly in flux and it's entirely dependent on where you're placing your consciousness. Okay, shift it back to gallery. Good. Does, does that clear that up for you, Diane? Is that good? Good, everybody else got that? Okay, good, good, good. All right, good. So. Next question. Uh, it would seem that it's part of the idea of where you focus. Yeah, so you, you intuited that. That is correct. Our whole body can have an insubstantial connecting to heaven and earth the whole time we are moving. Well, it's, uh, yes, the, to the extent that it's, it's happening and you know, we are connected up and it, there's an insubstantial connection there and that we are not consciously doing something about that. So it, uh, at, at that point, that's entirely correct. Is it too much of a simplification to say that the substantial are things that can be measured, speed, mass, muscle contraction, and the insubstantial we can't measure? I guess that would mean I would consider the electrical impulses in our bodies as substantial. While they may not be visible to the naked eye, they are measurable. All right, so, um, so yes, it would be an oversimplification because as I just said, it's, there's a, it's a constant shift back and forth. So it's a question of how substantial is it? So like classic example is, is my, my hand is, is very substantial to me, right? And, but uh, inside that hand, there are things which are less substantial. There's, uh, there's an energy animating the hands, okay? And that is less substantial than, than the flesh and bones itself. But that energy is also activated by thought. And that's even less substantial than the energy. And the, the different thoughts can have different levels of substantiality. There are some thoughts which have a lot of density to them. They make some thoughts make people very sad. And so they, you know, that they, they're very substantial. They have, you know, they have weight to them. And uh, other thoughts are very light and fluffy. And so we, uh, uh, so there's a constant shift there back and forth between the insubstantial and the substantial, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, two, energy gates. Uh, I've been studying the energy gates with David Shaver. When we are feeling inside the elbow, are we feeling into an energy gate? There are lots of energy gates throughout our body. If we can feel into each of them, it would seem that we could really amplify our power. Yes. Yes. In fact, um, uh, just finishing up a three-part series for my blog about Joe, Z-H-O-U, which is elbow gin. And it's one of the eight essential um, signature energies of, of uh, Taiji Tran. And it's, uh, they, they're, those eight are called the Ba Men or the eight gates. So it's, uh, so yes, it is an energy gate. And uh, more importantly, it is, it's a very special one. In fact, we're gonna do a little playing with that, that tonight also. The, uh, it's a very special one. And I think it's, it's the most mysterious and the most woo-woo of all the, uh, of the eight gates um, because it is not something that is a thing in and of itself is it amplifies all the other energies dramatically. And uh, so I just did a video this morning that I'll put on uh, uh, on YouTube that uh, will talks talks about that. But it's a uh, 
uh, it makes changes so that uh, so that as an energy gate, it's actually really dramatic. And one of the things that I encountered in my research was a um, um, research by a Harvard professor, um, Anna. Da, 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 oh, that name. Oh, it slips my mind right now, but she uh, uh, she did a, a whole thing using, and I, I mentioned this in one of the earlier things about the the Superman posture, and how that's an example of a what uh, what's called a power posture, and power postures are ones which are expansive, and a Superman posture is um, uh she did uh, a lot of research on it and showed that there are definite physiological changes that occur from just two minutes standing in a superman posture so she said that that there's a dramatic shift in a reduction in the levels of uh, cortisol which is a stress hormone which suppresses your immune system and a a, a dramatic increase in testosterone which uh animates you and, and gets things done. Testosterone also is, it, it's important for both males and females because it uh, uh, adds to muscle tone and strength as well as um, bone density. So you're, you're the increasing that is, enhances your, you know, your sense of uh, vitality. Um, she also points out that more importantly, it changes your, your, uh, your sense of self. You get, uh, you, it enhances your presence, your self-confidence, your, your ability just to, to act. And uh, so it uh, has a lot, of, uh, a lot of profound effects there. So we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but so the, just to finish the uh, answering that question. So yes, there's, it, is, it is one of the eight primary energy gates of Taiji Tran and it greatly enhances everything else. And that's, it's really, it's, it's superpower. And one more question here is, uh, da -da. I've experienced how meeting sets up a congruence of energy between two or more people. I can see how it would help us access our Shen, which is spirit. How does it relate to feeling our elbow and moving someone away with intention? Would meeting help and why, how? And uh, that's a, uh, there's a lot going on in that question. But uh, so the first part, yes. The uh, meeting, that is wherever you are encountering another one. You know, I talked a lot about this and finding you in a world of it, and plus a lot, of the, a lot of other things, but the, if we can encounter another with our whole being, that is in a state of wholeness and meet them as partners in a sacred dance, then there is this IU relation occurs at that point and it, takes us to a whole new place. So uh, I think it would be accurate to say, you call that Shen or spirit, and uh, which uh, the Shen in an, in an individual has a lot to do with wholeness. It has a lot to do with, with your whole being. And it is what elevates and directs you. It's, uh, Shen is, is very directed. It, it has, um, uh, it's, it's a focused intention. So it's more of a, uh, if you, uh, the way Yang Fu Kui explains it, it's, it's that, that it's a different from soul, which is the yin aspect, and Shen would be the yang aspect of spirit. So that, uh, I think that's, a, that's an important distinction there. So uh, Martin Buber said, whenever you, when, when you meet another person with your whole being, that God is the electricity that flows between you. And so that there's a, a spiritual encounter that occurs at that point. So yes, if you, uh, if you encounter some of that, you do get this, this spiritual hit that is uh, really profound. 
And uh, if you can take that and put it not just with another person, not, so, not just one of those conversations where, oh my God, it's I can't believe it's three o'clock in the morning. How, do, how God, did this happen? That kind of, of timelessness that occurs with the, with the IU. But if you can actually take it and meet every aspect of your life over and over again all day, then that is you're you're constantly getting renewed in uh, and you're elevating um, uh, your spirit as you do that you're accessing more shen when you do that um, and relating that to the elbow jin it's whatever we whatever we do that where we we reach with the elbows we feel the elbows it punches up our state of wholeness, our coherence. So pointing your index fingers is, is terrific for, for creating wholeness immediately. But if you want to take that and move it to a whole new level, then the, the Jojin or the elbow gin is, uh, uh, takes it up. So once you have that state of wholeness, then you find someone to dance with and you play. And that's where the IU comes in. That's where the meeting comes in. So it's one thing to attain a state of wholeness, attain a, a state of, um, you know, peace and, and tranquility and, and uh, even bliss. But it's another thing to be able to extend out and, and encounter another human being. Okay, so a uh, lot, lot uh, covered there. Discuss. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Did that cover it for you, Diane? Did that cover it for you? It did. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. So that was a lot of information. Any, uh, any questions, thoughts, uh, uh, disagreements, provocations? Uh, yes, Richard. Um, I have an impertinent question to ask. How, how does... Hi, Sharon. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so happy it went all went well. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard's got a question. <laughs> uh, how, how does an understanding of substantial and insubstantial help us in our practice? Ah, well, um, that's an interesting question. It's... Um, uh, couple of the uh, Yang family of Yang Cheng Fu uh, uh, said it's the most important thing that you can do. And his uncle uh, Yang Ben Hao, I think, was one. He said, um, yeah, if you, don't, if you don't get this, if you don't get substantial and insubstantial, that your gung fu is wasted. So in terms of, of its importance, they're pretty, they're pretty bullish on it. And uh, so, how does it how does it relate? The uh, it we have a tendency to develop through our nervous systems by relating primarily to the substantial. That is, our nervous systems learn by pushing against something and feeling resistance, whatever it may be, the floor, the air, whatever. It's like we gauge how much resistance, and then we set up uh, our, our responses to the world in that way. So that's our development follows along that arc until we reach a certain level of maturity. When we start to think conceptually, and we start to move more and more into an abstract realm, where we think about thoughts and thoughts of thoughts and thoughts of thoughts of thoughts and systems of thoughts and systems of systems of thoughts and things get more and more insubstantial. We start moving away from the solidity and the, the tactile resistance of, 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 of stuff and we move more and more in the direction of non-stuff. So being able to recognize what stuff and what's non-stuff in any given moment is 
absolutely essential for the uh, for your kung fu. And uh, yes. But don't you want to bring the stuff and the non-stuff together? I mean, you don't want to stay in the abstract realm, right? Because you're always having this feel, and you know. So you you. you Absol absolutely. It's so not the. Like you're leaving the substantial. Uh, well, that, that's, the, that's the point. We want, we want to be able to differentiate between the two and, and, and be able to know which we're, we're using at a given time. So the, uh, uh, when we get into Tai Chi, you know, the, uh, at, at, at the crudest level, we're talking about which leg is weighted. At, that's at the crudest level. You know, which arm is doing doing the business? Okay, that's that's substantial. Why? Because that's that's the business end right now. That's where I'm I'm focused. But as uh, Diane was pointing out earlier, is within that we also have our insubstantial. So, uh, do you want to give me a hand here? So, the uh, <laughs> so if we have Maria has has an arm here which is is substantial. It's got it's got your muscles and your skin and bones and and all kinds of cool stuff there. And if we if that is the 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 level we're we're playing on, then I have my skin and bones and arms and and stuff like that. And we have we have a certain conflict of physical forces and masses that are, are going on here. And, and so, but if Maria activates, let's say her elbow gin, points with her index fingers, and the insubstantiality there is what has transformed the whole equation. This is where you're not limited by size or your uh, uh, strength in order to be able to get something done. She's able to, here she's back to being substantial. She's, she's using her muscles to, to try to push me and nothing's happening. But if she just activates this, as soon as she does that, there is an insubstantiality. I'm actually lifted out of the ground and, and I start to float just by her changing her state. Going back to Scott's question, she changed her state. She changed from a primarily substantial one where she was focusing on her stuff to a state where she was focusing on the non-stuff. And so then it changes, changes everything. So if I'm doing my form and if I'm just going through and as a muscular activity, I'm focusing on the stuff. I'm focusing on the substantial. And, but if I, bring the gin into the equation, then, oh, everything becomes a whole lot more interesting. Maria gives, uh, you get this conflict, you know, or the contact we have here can be a, a substantial one, or it can be a combination where we are moving back and forth and recognizing where the substantial and the insubstantial is. And the possibilities are infinite in that. They're infinite possibilities. And having that as your guide, as you're working your way through it, I think is, is, the, is the major key to actually extending beyond Taiji Chuan just as a physical exercise system and into something which is a spiritual path. Okay, back to uh, gallery. Yeah. How does that how does that sound, Richard? You're on mute. Yeah. Did, did that um, answer your question? Well, it's yeah, uh, it's it, it's um it's philosophical in a way that I already kind of think of it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come to grips with, it seems as though 
you have more influence over your environment in an insubstantial state. Um, but then talking about influence over the environment is a substantial kind of thought. Um, so, um, it, it, seems like it seems like insubstantiality is more broadly connected uh, to the forces of the universe. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't make that assumption. I would say that that, well, that's the ba that they're, they're have, they have to be balanced, of course, right? So, so it, 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 it's always in reference to what, right? So you're, you, whenever you're talking about the insubstantia of the universe, it's like, okay, we're well, talking about planets here, or are we talking about empty space? You know, what are we, you know, what are we talking? Are we talking about dark matter? What, we, you know, what is, the, what is the, the, the universe that we're talking about? At that point, are we talking about thought? Are we talking about uh, what are you what are you pointing at there? Uh, if, oh, okay, yes. If I if I'm insubstantial, if I'm if I'm more connected to insubstantiality, it seems as though I'm floating more. Yes. Um, and that in the float, um, the kinetic forces seem to disappear. I'm not sure that's true. Okay. Hey. When you float, when you float, we're moving toward insubstantiality, we're moving more toward non-being. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yes. we're, 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 there's less form, there's less stuff there. Yes. So, and so um for those who see that as a spiritual path that is i would just want to be one with with pure awareness and, right. and leave my body behind that's that's cool right but i think the taoist way and and the definitely the tai chi way is no no both both and not either or right and it, yes. so there, there is a, an an interweaving of heaven and earth and so they, you know, the it's you know from from the Wuji comes the Taiji, the, the from the from the nothing comes the one, from the one comes the two, yin and yang, and from the two comes the three, heaven, earth, and man. And that's that's that with with we're in the in the center there, where we're trying to bring both the yin of the earth and the yang of of the heavens together, and and these interweaving here. Thank you, Rick. So, well, yes. Per, yeah, per, perhaps, um, perhaps I'm mixing metaphors. Okay. Um, when you're um, when you're demonstrating like you just were with Maria. Yes. And Maria has begun that interaction uh, very substantially. Yes. When she uh, when she becomes less substantial. And when she becomes more integrated by feeling her elbow, she's now able to move you very easily, which is a substantial action. That's yeah. what I can't, what I'm having trouble with is seeing that move as insubstantial. Even though I have the feeling of that feeling of expansion, you know, the feeling into the elbow expands. It just blows me up like uh, a blowfish. Okay. And everything is moved away from me that's, as that's, a blowfish move it. Right? Yes, but that seems, <laughs> but that's a substantial action, moving things away from me. So that's, that's where I'm getting yeah. a little stuck. And so, okay, so, and, and I think that's exactly what we're talking about. There's a, a paradox there that I think is what drives it. And so uh, I think the, uh, you know, one of the keys to understanding Taiji Tran is embracing paradox. You know, so we have a tendency to, uh, 
you know, think in an Aristotelian way where we exclude the middle, you know, and it's, that's the, the opposite of, of the way that, you know, the, the Chinese way, which has this sense of mutually arising. These two things are happening together and they're, and the better we're able to, to do that, that to interweave those two, the, uh, the more successful we're going to be. So in, in the case of Maria moving me, it was that blending of insubstantiality and substantiality. That is the insubstantiality of the jinn with the actual body. So, so she was able to, the, the jinn was what powered the body and made something happen. If she's just there and is totally insubstantial and she's happily in her, her elbow gin, but not um, doing anything with her body, then I'm not going anywhere. So it's not, it's not an either or in that case, it's, it's, it's a, a both and. Does that make sense? Um, I have a feeling you have another question there that I'm not answering. No, it does. It does. Well, I, the problem is that I have questions I can't figure out how to ask. So, ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so, I'm, so I'm working on that, but okay. um, but I know that I'm guilty of thinking too much about things. Yeah, um, and that gets in the way. In so brain. I'm trying I'm trying to focus on that feeling of expansion and see what happens because that I it's that I, I moment that you that, think too much. I disagree that you think too much. I think you're thinking exactly right. So <laughs> keep doing it, Lynn. <laughs> Well, I was just wondering, Richard, if you're trying to to over literalize um, substantial, right? So that the insubstantial can't do substantial things, you want to separate those. Whereas it seems to me that the, the insubstantiality of Maria um, moving Rick, it's it's her her connection to the insubstantial. Um, makes her more effective substantially where you started this conversation, but right. in a way that blends substantial and substantial rather than makes her simply be substantial, right? She would use her muscle to be substantial, right? So I think, I think that, that, that blending that Rick was talking about is, um, is really important, that interweaving, you know. Does that help at all or is that... Um, well, it's it's all it's all part of it's all part of what I'm thinking about. But now I'm now I'm now what I'm thinking is that I need to continue to focus on that feeling of expanding. Uh, it's the it's the feeling and it's the feeling into the elbow that causes the expansion. It's the expansion that enables effortless power. Right. So. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I, it's both. It's both. You're 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 writing something, Rick. I can't read one of those words there. What does that say, Rick Myers? You're 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 on mute. Yes, I wrote down. Don't compartmentalize. Embrace, and then I quoted Bruce Lee. Don't think, feel. Bruce Lee said that. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of both, thinking and yeah, thinking and feeling. Beatrice, you had something. You're on mute. I just um, Richard keeps talking about focusing on expanding, and I I'm um, I'm trying to understand that in the in the context of the power of yin, which isn't necessarily expansive, but it can mean. I mean, I think about you know just sort of what we've trained about sort of like that drawing down, being sung, first of all, is incredibly, is very, is not expansive, but it's very powerful. And then the drawing down that can like, again, have enormous effortless power, but it's not expansive per se. I want to, wanted to address that. That's, that's a very good point, Beatrice. That's exactly, exactly right. Because, you know, the, the expansion is, is yang and, and, and the contraction is yin. And we need, we need them both. Contraction takes us into form. So we, if we're, energy takes us out and 
contraction takes us into into form. It's more yin. So the <coughs> it's a pulling in together. It's a coalescing into a shape. So we need both. Okay. Nancy. Uh, it's like breathing. You can't always be inhaling and you can't always be exhaling unless you die. So life is inhaling and exhaling. And then inhaling again and exhaling again. Yeah. And then having fun with thinking about it every once in a while. But then you got to inhale again and then you got to exhale again. And it's a real good thing to know whether you're inhaling or exhaling. Exactly. That, that particularly is helpful, like if, say, if you're swimming. And, uh, yes, very much so. <laughs> and also whether you're moving your arms or not, if you're trying to get to the shore, if you're yeah, right. going to drown, <laughs> if you stop. So there, there's a mindfulness that you bring to these things. So yes, right. we feel them. Yes, we think. It's, it, there's Both are happening there. And the ability to differentiate the, the yin from the yang, differentiate the substantial and the insubstantial, all super important for, the, for that. Good. But but just like the yin yang symbol is so beautiful because as one is is switching to the other, there, there's always it, that's always going on. But then there's the the dots that are just like there's still enough substantial in the insubstantial. There's still enough insubstantial with this. Well put. Well put. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Beatrice. I just want to. I want to uh, just allow, just want to understand something a little more. Uh, uh, nuance or precisely about the yin, which is that you just said that yin is a contracting back into form. But I keep thinking of the way, particularly of like of like drawdown, the way in which like again, in the same way that an effortless pointing of elbows and opening can just push someone. I feel I've I've seen people you know just sort of effortlessly just kind of throw someone across the room. Also, but with a very with that with that. In other words, it doesn't seem like it's just contracting into form. It feels like it's got a power as, as it's as powerful as yang in terms of moving things. Is uh, that not it, is, it is. It's just a, which direction is it going? <laughs> right, okay, that's what I mean, yeah. Yang is going up and out, yin is going down and in. So it's- but Something it's just, as, just as intensely. Yeah, so it, it's a, it's a, so the, uh, so the direction that uh, that is going it determines what the what the flavor of the energy is. It's just a way of it's just a way of describing that. And it's it's simplistic to say, you know, expansion versus contraction, but it's uh, that is it's at at its essence that's really what we're talking about there. So what we're doing is uh, the yin impulse is to return to homeostasis, that mm -hmm. is to bring something back into a known form. So that it a known recognizable form that you feel comfortable in, and then the yang impulse is to say, "Hey, that's not enough. What else is out there?" And so there's there's that that there's a constant like looking around, saying, "What else is possible?" And then going back and saying, "Ah, boy, no place like home." And so we go back, and 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 life goes like that, and and your tai chi goes like that as well. Nancy. I feel that a lot with actually doing the form, uh, thinking of the spiraling. As you're spiraling in, you know, you are preparing to expand out and release, you know, in a sort of release, but as you're spiraling in, it's yin, but it's also got some yang in there because you are feeling that if you really feel into it, you feel sure. if you were to wind a clock or wind something to, you know, get that, so you feel that it, almost that explosive energy being ready to be released. And yeah. then as it's releasing, you feel the opposite coming back in because you have to draw back in again. You can't just continue out, out, out all the time. Right. So the any distinction between yin and yang is really arbitrary and it's, it's depending on what you're looking at at the time, which part of it you're looking at at the time. Because every, every move in, in a Tai Chi Tran form has a yin and a yang aspect. So you can't say that, oh, roll back, it's, it's always always yin. No, it's that there's a yang aspect to it. Yeah. I was gonna ask, you were talking about the Superman posture? Yeah. So what if Superman posture, you said, was pretty young, right? 
Uh -huh. But what if you add to it a little sum qua? So let's say you did sum qua, so you're feeling the yin channels up the inside of your leg uh -huh. at the same time as you're opening the elbows and feeling the yang part in the top. We're gonna do that in a minute. Oh, okay. That's that's great. That's a great great suggestion. But we'll, we're gonna do that in a second there. So in fact, let's do that now. So what I'd like to do is to do one minute of standing in a just with your arms hanging and the body in a very yin posture, which is completely collapsed, right? So they just, 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 very, you're not expanding at all. So just, we're just going to do that for, for one minute. Okay. I just want you to feel into that. Okay, that was a minute. So now, put your hands on your hips, reach out with your elbows, and do a Bria said there, get Sung Kwa, boom, boom. And we're gonna do that for two minutes. Reach up with your knee one. Think so. There's a, a yin aspect in that you're sung, but there's a yang aspect in that you're expanding. You're reaching with your your knee one. You're reaching with your elbows. Just pay attention to the feeling of this. Okay, that was two minutes. Just feel into that. Let you bring your arms down. And just notice how that feels. And I just bring your elbows out slightly, reach with that and notice how that feels. Okay, so I'm curious to hear what people experienced with those three different postures there. We did the last one for a very short time, but I just want to uh, want to hear what people have to say about that. What 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 feeling did you 
did you get from those? Linda. So <clears throat> I'm having a, you know, a super low energy, not feeling good day after feeling better for days. And um, I wasn't really sure I could stand for a minute. So I felt a little bit like I was really pushing myself to stand. But when I did the Superman thing with the elbows and all that other adjustment, it wasn't a struggle any, it wasn't a struggle somehow. It felt like whatever was happening was giving me the energy to stand without fighting to stand. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Good. Anybody else? Scott. So, um, well, the first thing was that the two minutes seemed way shorter than the one minute. When you said two minutes, I couldn't believe it was two minutes already. <laughs> it was really, it was definitely a time travel. But um, good, good. Uh, you know, I, I felt the you know the first one was very relaxed. The second one, I got, I felt energized, but it wasn't really comfortable. It was uncomfortable for me for some reason. Which one? The sec the second one, the the Superman pose. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. It was just it didn't really. It was like 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 i had too much caffeine it was like sort of uncomfortable okay no that, that that's 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 important what about the third one where you're just reaching out with your elbows uh that was good that was that that was uh felt good and so good and the, right. so the superman posture was a little too young for you it seemed to be yeah okay good lynn i thought the superman posture um I felt like I had to go sung in my shoulders in order to actually expand my elbows. So maybe I was cheating and adding a little yaw again in there, but um, then it felt really good. I Before that, 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 I felt, that, that's beautiful. I felt uncomfortable. Huh? I thought that was beautiful. That's, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And Nick wanted to. Well, I just had the thought and listening to all this that the problem with discussing all of these things is language. Um, it's linear and you can only really talk about one thing at a time and, and this is multiple things happening at the same time. Yes. And so your experience is both substantial and insubstantial at the same time, and, but you can't really talk about it that way. Uh, but we're, we're trying. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's what, it's what, it, what's ma it's what makes it difficult sometimes. Sure, when, but that, because we that's, think that's, with words, when we think about it, we use the words, right. right? And the words all happen in a linear time space kind of continuum. Right? So they, 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 words are designed to, to whack off all the, all the, all the other stuff and and just kind of zero in on on a particular thing, and that's their function, and and we're happy to do that because. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to have this meeting here without those pesky words. And so um, uh, I think we're all doing a very good job of, of using our words <laughs> 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 to talk about stuff which you really, most people can't even, even imagine what we're talking about here. I think we're doing a pretty darn good job of using language to communicate something which is, you know, way out there. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> well beyond the, the the range of experience of a lot of people. So I think this is, you know, we're going into the woo-woo, and I think, you know, we're doing an okay job there. Anybody else? Hi, Sandy. Uh, Valerie. Valerie. Hey, how's it going? Um, especially in the second part, standing in Superman, um, you know, and I was really working on being, you know, Sun Kwa and, you know, feeling the elbows and the, again, it's the words, the lower portion of my body felt like a pedestal. And uh, I agree with Scott that two minutes, it was like, oh, you're kidding me. It didn't seem nearly as long as the, the first um, minute. Um, 
and I, the ah, the legs were like hollow. You know, my base became very hollow, and the upper part, you know, focusing on the elbows. Ah, it was just big and very substantial for me. Um, and, you know, it kind of became even more clear that really the hollow feeling in the lower portion of my body. And if you're familiar with Guolin Ying standing in universal post, it just, duh, I see what he was doing. Yes. Why this was so powerful I mean, I just, and I had, I had to do that. I had to go into Universal Post and feel that. And it was, it was like the arms were just completely full without, you know, all, and any effort. And the legs were still hollow, but I was still very full. It, I don't know how to, just, well, again, it's the word thing. I don't know really how to describe that, but it was like, I hope I could do that again. <laughs> Because that was really cool. It was very, Great. very cool. Excellent. Good. Anybody else? Stan. You're on a mute, Stan. Unmute. Okay. Uh, this way, uh, more or less an observation. I'm not sure if I'm. Yeah, uh, getting it exactly. When the, in the Superman uh, posture, I yeah. notice that with the elbows out, I feel that yes, that I'm reaching, but it seems like uh, every time I uh, breathe out, it's like I'm getting more uh, insubstantial, and then when I breathe in, yeah, I'm more uh, substantial. It, is that uh, common, or is am I uh, something is uh, not quite right? Uh, look, sounds good to me. Hmm. Okay. Okay, because I know everything else was pretty solid except for that yeah. fact that it um, seemed to be uh, with the breath. I'm expanding and slightly shrinking, not very far. I'm still well, out there. I think. I think uh, that that sounds about right. Mm. Good. Okay, so the, thank you. Beatrice. Beatrice. You're on mute. Uh, two quick questions. One, it's a question for Lynn. My phone, my computer's coming in and out, and you said that when your elbows were out, your shoulders did what? It blurred out at that moment. Oh, I said I had to make my shoulders less, uh, more sung, more relaxed, more yin, in order to actually reach with the elbows, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, I wasn't able to access that. Right. So that, that ties into what I want to ask Rick, which is, so um, uh, I've, I've, well, I want to describe my three experiences. So one is was standing uh, with the elbows out. I was being very strong with my lower body. And before you even said it, I was like, I immediately wanted to reach with my, reach with my new one. And it felt really lovely. It just felt lovely and very balanced. And, um, but interestingly, it, obviously, a lot of energy was running. So when we, when we did the third thing, I then felt like, oh, all my wires were just blown. Like I felt <laughs> like I, I felt exhausted. I was, I, so somehow, while I was doing the Superman, which which what wasn't purely, it was very balanced. It felt like I felt very sung. I felt lifted. I felt um, I felt the nice balance. But then when I went to the third stage, I was like, whoa, maybe that was more than I've done in a while. So that was an interesting. I don't know why the third kind of going back to homeostasis, like lit up for me how intense the second stage had been. I'm not sure if that's what exactly happened. Go ahead, on, on the third one, um, how many people felt more on the third one? I was thinking in, um, yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, so some people, some people did. I, I know I did, you know, yeah. and it's, uh, I think uh, for me that you know what I wanted to do was do an experiment there with the with the, with the, with that that Superman posture just because it's an iconic posture and mm -hmm. uh, it's also extremely limited in terms of use in terms <laughs> for anything other than just 
pumping you up. And uh, <laughs> but what I what I uh, what I like about it is there is all this research on postures like that and how that how that affects your your body mind. And so I wanted to use that as a as a reference point because now we can take that that information and we're not stuck in that one posture that we can take that information and by using elbow gin we can do it with anything you know you're sitting you know you're sitting at the at at, at the computer you know, if you just took, reach with your elbows as you're doing it ah <laughs> click right <laughs> Yeah, so you're, an effect you're, you're standing in line and you just just pop your elbows out it's like oh if you're walking down the street you just, <laughs> just feel the, whatever you're doing you're constantly refreshing that state and it changes it changes things so the uh having that you know two minutes of 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 that iconic posture is, is great but as a frame of reference and Obviously, you could use it anytime you want, you know, if you want that particular energy, but it's just one of a million energies that we can, <laughs> can play with. And we have an infinite uh, paint box from which to, to draw our inspiration. So we, can, we, get to, uh, we get to go in any direction we want. And that just happens to be one. You want to say something? Uh, I was just wondering if this takes uh, Scott's question about states. Uh, we're, we really want to know if we're getting back to Scott's question about states. We're not going to be able to get into that. That's a that's a, a a bit longer conversation, Scott. And if you don't mind, we'll we'll, we'll postpone that to, till next time, just because we're we're reaching the end of our uh, a lot of time here. And uh, I wanted to uh, and that one I want to give some so, you know, a lot of a lot of thought to. We've, we've, uh, like, I, like I said, I thought that might be a Saturday, a Sunday discussion, but whatever you know, whatever you uh, whatever you think. No, it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's a great it's a great one, and one I'd like to uh, have uh, exercises to accompany it, so that we can actually start to identify some of these different some of these different states and things. Nancy. Yeah, my my experience uh, with that was of course at the first posture comfortable I'm, I love that you know settling in and then when I did the Superman I do the Superman a lot anyway uh, in general it just seems to happen I find myself outside looking at things and I'm in a Superman posture but when I feel when I do that I feel like I'm you know expressing I, I feel expansive but I also feel coming in and then this, as soon as you said, now feel into your elbows, I got a huge energy surge into my arms, into my elbow, heat like I couldn't believe. And mm. then at the end of that, you said, now drop your arms and then feel into the elbow. And it felt like everything then sort of went throughout the whole body. And I felt not completely soon, not completely this, I was like, in this this massive energy um, space, which was really Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. That's great. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Any other closing comments, questions? All right. This has been uh, that hour went by very fast. Oh, Richard. Yes. Uh, I just uh, I put up in the chat the link to Master Joe's birthday weekend which has gone online, some great workshops, free, Thank but you. a donation is uh, appreciated. But uh, a lot of our friends are doing workshops. Uh, right. And it's, uh, you know, going to Master Joe's birthday party in uh, Wantage is, uh, uh, in New Jersey is always wonderful. It's a wonderful group of people. And uh, they're continuing it with uh, individual workshops uh, on Saturday and Sunday or Friday and Saturday? Um, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, I think. A nine to six Eastern Standard Time. So anyone who could partake, you'll uh, you'll you'll see some great things to participate in. That's great. Thanks, Richard. That's where I that's actually where I met Rick was at uh, Master Joe's festival. <laughs> that's right. Long time a ago. Long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Beautiful. 
<laughs> okay, kids, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, yeah, if you uh, if you have any questions, anything pops up during the week, write it down because that's uh, it's great to have the have this uh, wide ranging conversation going on here. Mm -hmm. So uh, appreciate it. Great. See you all soon. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Thank, Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick.